The Bible solemnly declares that in the last days, the final struggle will be over worship. Revelation 13 verse 4 says, And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Verse 15 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Revelations 14 verse 9 through 10 says, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Jesus said in Matthew 15 verse 9, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Here we find a clear link between true worship and the keeping of the commandments. Furthermore, the Bible says in the book of Revelation that those that receive the seal of God in contrast to that of the mark of the beast will keep his commandments. Revelation 14 verse 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. The Bible goes on to say in Revelation chapter 12 verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. This simply means that in the last days, there will be a satanic hatred against those that keep the commandments of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 34, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Exodus 34, verse 28, tells us that the covenant is in fact the Ten Commandments. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25, the Bible forewarns us of a power that would arise that would think to change times and laws. There is only one power on earth that has assumed the authority to change the infallible word of God, the Roman Catholic Church. Why do Catholics go to Mass on Sundays? Uh, not really conducive to a short answer because going to Mass on Sunday is the center of our lives as Catholic people, but I'll see what I can do to give a clear and concise and short answer. To begin with, um, going to Mass on Sunday is a basic obligation uh, for Catholics. From the very, very beginning of the history of the Church, the Apostles and their followers gathered on the Day of the Lord to break bread and to celebrate the resurrection of Christ on the day that Christ rose from the dead. As Catholics, we've adjusted it a little bit. It's no longer for us keep holy the Sabbath day, but rather keep holy the Lord's day, the day in which Jesus rose from the dead. One of the ways in which it's described is God rested on the seventh, redeemed us on the eighth day. And so we don't keep holy the seventh day. We keep holy the day of the Lord, which is the day after the seventh day, which is the eighth day and is in fact the first day. Here we see two elements contending for the worship of man. Jesus said in John 14 verse 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments. In the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 11, we see that the word sign and seal are used synonymously. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 2 through 3, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal or sign of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Furthermore, the Bible says in Isaiah 8 verse 16, Bind up the testimony, seal the law, among my disciples. 
So then the question quite naturally is, what is a sign or seal of God? Ezekiel 20 verse 20 says, And hallow my Sabbaths, that they may be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. The Bible says in Romans 6 verse 16, Know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants ye are to whom ye obey. In obedience to God's word, those who keep the day that God alone has hallowed and sanctified through faith acknowledge and accept Him as Lord and Savior. The opposite is also true. By yielding to the edict or command of a man, by accepting a false Sabbath, or disregarding the Sabbath that the Lord has instituted, we by default declare a man to be head over our lives. As was seen in our previous video, in fulfillment of Bible prophecy, a Sunday law in the form of the mark of the beast is coming. The question is, when the decree goes forth, who will you worship?